Hello. This video will show you how to set up Raspberry Pi without a monitor, keyboard, and mouse attached through a process commonly referred to as headless setup. Raspberry Pi Foundation made the headless setup process much simpler recently, and this video details the new method. I will demonstrate how to install Raspberry Pi operating system on a microSD memory card and how to pre-configure the Raspberry Pi system for remote command line usage. While I will use a Windows PC in this video, this tutorial is also applicable to Mac and Linux systems. To set up Raspberry Pi headless, you need a PC, a Raspberry Pi with a power supply, any model currently sold, and a microSD memory card. Depending on your PC's ports, you may also need an adapter for connecting the memory card to your PC. Your Raspberry Pi needs an operating system. The simplest way to install the operating system is by using Raspberry Pi Imager software, available from Raspberry Pi website for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Download it and install it on your PC. Connect the memory card to your PC. Ignore any system prompts to format the card. Start the Imager software and choose the operating system. I recommend Raspberry Pi OS Linux, which is the default option, but if you are not planning to use the graphical desktop environment, consider installing the light version, which will boot and run faster than the full desktop edition. You can always add the graphical interface later. The Imager has an Options button. Make sure to use it. Options shown on your system may not be exactly as shown here, because Imager has likely been updated since this video has been published, but the options I am about to explain should be there, as they are key to the headless setup process. You can set the host name. This is how you will refer to your Pi whenever connecting to it remotely. I recommend changing the host name from default if you have more than one Raspberry Pi, or if you plan to use your Pi on a public network, like a school or library, so it does not conflict with other Raspberry Pi devices active on the network. Take note of the host name, as you will need it later. Enabling SSH is necessary for remote access. SSH is a service that runs on the Pi, allowing secure remote connections. Password authentication is standard with Linux systems. Traditionally, the default username is Pi, but you can choose something else. It is recommended that Linux usernames contain only lowercase letters, digits, and maybe contain a period, dash, or an underscore in the middle. Choose a secure password. Remember that your Pi will be connected to internet, and a bad password may compromise your entire network one day. Whatever you choose as username and password, remember it. You will need to complete this entire process again if you forget your login credentials. Unless you are planning to use a wired Ethernet connection, configure Wi-Fi connection now. Enter your Wi-Fi details, whatever network you are planning to connect to. Make sure to enter all information carefully, including the two-letter country code where you are located. You can look up your country code through a simple online search for alpha2 country codes. I am in Canada, so my country code is CA. Wi-Fi configuration requires special care. My experience is that this information is often mistyped. This setup will not verify the connection, and it is frustrating to find out at the end that you are not able to connect and to be forced to complete the setup again. This Wi-Fi configuration tool sets up a standard WPA connection, something that you are likely to have in your home. Other Wi-Fi setups, such as Open Access Points or EAP, require manual setup later and are beyond the scope of this tutorial. The last thing that can be customized here is locale, which affects settings such as keyboard layout, system language, and time zone. Set it to whatever applies to you. Look over all settings once again, and proceed with the installation if everything is as intended. Select your memory card as storage. Make sure to select the correct device, as anything on it will be erased by the imager. The write process will take a couple of minutes, depending on the speed of the memory card and whether you choose to verify the installation. My installation is finished. Depending on imager options, your memory card may appear now on a Windows system as a drive letter labeled boot. Do not be concerned that this volume is much smaller than your memory card capacity. Most of the Raspberry Pi OS is stored on the card as a separate volume. Since that volume has a Linux file system, which Windows does not understand, it is not shown. 
Windows may, however, prompt you to format that volume, and such prompts are to be ignored. Eject the memory card now from your PC and install it in your Raspberry Pi. Remove the card from the adapter if you were using one and install the memory card in the card slot of the Pi, with the labeled side of the card oriented towards the bottom side of the Pi board. Make sure to insert the card fully. Connect the power and observe the diagnostic LEDs on the Pi. A solid red LED means the Pi has power. You should also see a flashing green LED next to it, which shows that the memory card is being read. If the green LED is not flashing, power the Pi off, verify that the card is installed correctly, and power the Pi back on. If the problem persists, redo the entire setup from the beginning using Imager software, possibly with another memory card. Assuming that the setup was completed correctly and the Pi connected to the network successfully, you can attempt to connect to the Pi once the green LED visibly slows down the flashing or stops altogether, indicating that the boot process concluded and the Pi is ready to be used. The boot process normally takes about a minute, depending on the speed of your memory card, but it may take an extra minute or two the first time around, as the brand new system needs to configure itself, so be patient. I will show you now how to connect to the Pi using command line. If you are a Windows user and never use the command line interface, I suggest installing PuTTY and using that to connect to your Pi. PuTTY is free software used for remote command line access to Linux, which Raspberry Pi OS is. Go ahead and download PuTTY software from the web, install it on your PC and run it. The connection requires your Raspberry Pi hostname. Regardless whether you use Wi-Fi, wired, or mixed connections, both your PC and Raspberry Pi must be connected to the same network. The first time you connect, you will be asked whether you trust the remote Raspberry Pi host. You can accept your Pi's digital signature permanently, so this prompt will not appear next time. Type in the username, whatever you chose in the Imager options, and press Enter. Now type in your Raspberry Pi password and press Enter. Nothing will be shown while you enter your password here. Beginner users expect asterisks to be shown, but this is not the case. Just confidently type your password without mistakes and press Enter. I have logged in successfully, which is indicated by the Raspberry Pi prompt. The system is ready to be used through commands typed at the prompt. If you are a Mac or Linux PC user, PuTTY software is not required as you can use the terminal application to connect to your Pi using SSH command. By the way, the same command is available under Windows 10 command prompt. Let me demonstrate the process. Run the terminal application if you have a Mac or Linux system, or if you are a Windows user, start the command prompt by searching for a program called CMD. Now type the following, SSH, followed by a space. Now type your Raspberry Pi username, followed by an at sign, followed by your Pi hostname, dot loco. It is important that there is a space between the SSH keyword and the rest of the command, while the username and hostname are typed together without any spaces, formatted like an email address. Press Enter Next. Just like with PuTTY, you will be asked to confirm whether you trust the connection. However, you will not be asked for username here as it was provided with the original command. Provide the password. Again, nothing will be shown as you type. Press Enter, and you are in. Whether you use PuTTY or straight up terminal is a matter of personal preference. Either way works. To wrap things up, let me show you two important commands. You can use the exit command followed by the enter key to disconnect. The Pi will remain on and you can reconnect to it later. Use the sudo power off command to shut down your Pi safely, minimizing the risk of damage to the memory card when you disconnect the power. Observe the green LED after you issue the command. Do not disconnect the power until the green LED stops flashing. What's next? 
If you are a beginner and want to continue with the command line, you need to learn basic commands to perform administrative tasks, navigate the file system, and edit files. You are in a good spot, as I have an entire video series covering that from the ground up, so check that out. Did you like this video? Then give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.